Hello everyone, my name is Nick and today I'm going to do a tour of all of my aroids. So I am going to go around and show you literally every single one of my aroids. Uh, just to recap, an aroid is a plant that falls in the Araceae family of plants, which includes a genus like Philodendron, Monstera, Raphidophora, Epipernums, which is just your standard pothos, or even Spathophyllums, which are just your standard peasley. So there are a lot of plants that fall into the Araceae family, specifically house plants. So I have a whole lot to share with you guys today, so I am going to flip the camera back around. But I'm really excited. I really have a lot that I've been kind of stowing away. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to start off in the plant corner back there. We're going to start off today's Aroid houseplant tour over here in my plant corner. And the first one you might be noticing is this rather large Raphidophora tetrasperma trellis. So I actually did a video on this a few months ago when I was setting it up, but it did not... It was not this large at the time. It has completely almost outgrown the trellis. I'm going to have to cut it back rather soon. And I really have to attribute the insane growth of this plant to the grow light that you see right here, my Soltech Solutions Aspect Light, which I do have a discount code, which I'll leave on screen. It's Philly Foliage 15 to get you 15% off. But really, it's done a number on all of these plants. But that Raphidophora in particular, it's just like growing like a freaking weed. So if we're moving up to the top of my display, I have this Amidrium zippelinium, which is definitely a mouthful. Um, this has some really fun tendrils that grow all around that I'll kind of show you in a second. But what I love most about this plant is it doesn't look like an aroid. It doesn't look like the other ones. This more looks like a like a fern or a palm more so. It looks definitely like a like palm leaves. It's definitely quite wonderful. Um, but these tendrils kind of work their way around and eventually they will put off some new leaves for me. But for right now, they're just kind of going all crazy. You can see another one right here. And then directly below it, this plant right here is a Monstera Deliciosa Albo Variegata. I believe this might be that Borsigiana variety, which just means that the, the leaves are going to stay a little bit more small in, in stature. This is two plants in the pot, um, and I have a new leaf coming in right back there. And this plant is really gorgeous. I actually get asked a lot about this because the leaves, because they don't have the splits, it doesn't really look like a Monstera, so... It is a variegated monstera, it just doesn't look as voluptuous as some of the ones that you're going to see if you were to see this plant on Instagram. And moving down a little bit more, I have this Homolamena rubicens right here. Now Homolamena rubicens, I think this is also called Emerald Gem. Uh, this is rather underwhelming when it's young, but when this plant gets more mature, these leaves are going to get more heart-shaped, and they will get some, these ruffles will be get, get really pronounced, so a really gorgeous plant. It's just a little underwhelming when it's young, and I have a philodendron pink princess right next to it. I, this thing is leaning like crazy. I need to get a stake for this thing, like, weeks ago, but, um, yeah, this new leaf, it's kind of sad. It kind of, like, choked itself and it kind of snapped so I can tell it would have had some really nice variegation but maybe it'll live but I, I really don't think it's going to and actually one more I just kind of missed up here before I move on is this philodendron myoi um this is I think this has also been getting sold lately as under the pseudonym philodendron tahiti but this plant really really loves the Soltech solutions as you can see these new leaves are coming in really really nicely but then if I move back down to where I was, I have this unidentified aroid. So this was sold to me as a Syngonium. I don't think it's a Syngonium, and many of you were telling me also it's not a Syngonium, but these leaves down here have some really nice lobes to them, and then up here it kind of loses it. So I guess it's, you know, maybe a little bit more immature, or maybe it wasn't as happy. But this, this new leaf is a little bit larger, but it's definitely got some damage to it, so... I'm still learning with this plant, but this is it's rather fun having a plant where I really don't know the identity. Um, and then right behind that is an Aglianema. This one is Aglianema Red Emerald. I love this Aglianema. I would almost be daring enough to say that this is my favorite Aglianema. It's just so pretty. The stems are pink. It's kind of difficult to see, but I just love the coloration to the leaves. It's just really, really stunning. There's actually another Raphidophora back here, so you can see this the smaller leaves. This one's grown from tissue culture, while the one up here is grown from cuttings, but in due time, this one that's grown from tissue culture will look identical to this one up here, I promise you. And then if I move my way down, I have a peace lily. So this is a Spathophyllum domino. So this is a variegated peace lily, and I don't really have good luck with most peace lilies, but I find this variegated peace lily is incredibly easy to grow, so... Highly, highly recommend it if you like peace lilies, but you've been struggling like me. So, yeah, really, really excellent. And then I have one more. This is a Philodendron Imperial Red. 
And what's really cool about this plant is the leaves come in very, very red. I can see a new leaf coming in down here, but you can see this one's got a nice bronzy color kind of getting blown out from the light. But the leaves do fade back to green, but they will keep a little bit of a red edge to the leaves. So a really, really wonderful plant. All right, now we're going to move over to this window. I don't really have many aroids in this window, but you can kind of see I have this crazy vine going all around the window. Of course, the lighting's not that great, but it's all coming from this pot right here. So this is a Syndapsis Pictus Silvery Ann. And what I love most about this plant is I have them hanging all over my house because they hang up high and I can see very visibly when the leaves curl in like this that I need to water this plant. So this is a telltale sign that I need to water my syndapsis. But if we move over to some of these newer leaves down here, you can see the really lovely variegation that this plant has. So compared to the standard syndapsis pictus, which you'll see later in this video, this silvery and is known for the silver hue that the silver cast more so that kind of takes over the leaf. And I have one more aroid in this window. This is just an Epipernum aureum manhula or manjula. So this gets some really funky variegation, but it's just a, a pothos, a, a more standard vining pothos or devil's ivy. Uh, but this one is a, a new one in cultivation, at least to my knowledge. So a really, really fun plant. It vines effortlessly, um, and it really does tell you if it's not getting enough water because it will wilt. Uh, it will wilt quite a bit. And if you find that you're getting a lot of yellow leaves, then it's telling you that you're watering it too much. So a really good talker. It, this plant is really good at using its words. But the more common type of pothos would be the Epipernum aureum, the standard golden pothos, which you can see right here growing up this other trellis that I have. Now, I do not have a grow light above this trellis, as you can see, so this one is not growing as prolifically as the trellis that I have behind me. But another plant that's really funky is this Thematophyllum sprucianum. So this has these crazy leaves, actually. It's rather interesting. Thematophyllums were recently reclassified in the last few years from philodendrons to thematophyllum, so it's a specific group, Meconostigma, which is uh, a subgenus of, of philodendron, but now it's referred to as thematophyllum. But I wouldn't be upset if someone referred to this as a philodendron because just a year or two ago, this was referred to um, as philodendron goldii, and that was a correct taxonomy. So if we kind of just work our way around, then you can see a bit of a better view of the thematophyllum sprucianum. So, a really, really lovely plant. It almost looks more like a Schifflera, which ironically I have right down here, or Umbrella Tree. But this is a completely different plant. And oh no, I'm noticing, I think I just broke off some leaf, so that's okay. But um, if we move on, I don't think I have any more aroids on here. Oh, that's a total lie. I do have a Monstera Peru, or they sometimes refer to this as Monstera Carstenianum, and I'm apologizing to the fact that I know I need to dust off this plant like crazy. But this one, very similar to the Amidrium, gets these very, very long tendrils. And once it gets to a point where it feels like it, it puts off a leaf. So you can see a leaf right here. And I have a, another tendril right here that is putting off some leaves. So I will probably let these go for another month or two. And once they have three or four leaves, I will probably cut them back and propagate them into a new plant because I'm not really feeling, I'm not really feeling this long spindly vine. It's not really doing it for me. And if we move into this window, I have a rather cool plant. This is a Monstera, but it's a undescribed variegated version. So this is my green variegated Monstera. I can see a really nice leaf right here. Um, so this gets lime green variegation versus the white on the Albo variegata, the cream on the Thai constellation, or the yellow that's on the Aria marmorata. So this is a completely different type of monstera. Sorry, the lighting is not that great, but I think you guys can see the leaves pretty well to a point. <laughs> um, and if I move along, I don't even really think I have any more arrows in this window. Um, but up above, I have this Epipremnum aureum, just your standard jade patho. So this does not have that yellow variegation, unlike the one that was on the trellis. And then another aroid is that Zamiacolcus zamiafolia that's all the way in the top corner up there. A ridiculously drought-tolerant plant. I always say about ZZ plants, if you water them more than you pay your rent, it's too much. And I cannot even tell you the last time I watered that one up there. Honestly, it's probably been like two or three months, so maybe I should consider going up there after I'm done filming. If we work our way down, this is a Diefenbachia Tiki, I want to say. I think it's called Diefenbachia Tiki. A wonderful girl named Nancy traded me this at my plant swap that I hosted at Urban Jungle. 
And then if we work our way down, I have your standard Epipenum Aureum, just like the one that was on the trellis, although this one is a little bit more heavily variegated. And then another philodendron, or maybe the first philodendron, I don't know how many I've shared with you guys yet, but this is a philodendron, I think this is philodendron heteraceum, uh, lemon lime, or maybe they, sometimes they refer to this as philodendron, philodendron scandens because it's got scandent growth, but I'm not positive on what this is referred to as I see it as so many different names but this is just the lemon lime version of your standard heart leaf philodendron although this one looks like it was taken from a more mature cutting from the way these leaves are slightly ruffled this plant when it gets more mature the leaves get some really nice creases to them as you can sort of see right here versus these more juvenile leaves on the tip so let's move our way over to the microwave which I don't even know if I have any plants or aeroids on the microwave oh I do I have one so this is a Epipernum pinatum cebu blue. So this is very similar to the other pothos or Epipernums I was sharing with you guys, but this is a different species, and this one is known for its blue color that the leaves have. And this one I have growing on a totem, but you'll see I have some others growing around my home that are trailing. And then right next to that I have this Monstera adansonii, and I do have to apologize because the lighting is going to definitely be very hit or miss for the next few minutes. but. As you can see, it's grown all the way up its totem, outgrown it into the window up there. Um, Monstera adansonii, I find, takes extremely well to a sphagnum moss pole, so I highly, highly recommend growing it on a pole. I think it's like the best thing you can do. I have other ones around my home, but you will see they have not grown nearly as much as this one right here. And then right below that, I have this really lovely philodendron mexicanum. Rather small still, but you can see a few leaves that I have right here. It's got some, it's putting off some of like sap from here. I think these are like the extra floral nectaries if I'm not mistaken. And then moving along I have another thematophyllum. This is a thematophyllum bipinatophytum. So this is probably your more standard thematophyllum. This one I'm definitely giving it a lot of light. You can see this leaf right here has a hefty burn scar on it so I should probably turn it because you can see it it goes towards the window, but it's in a rather large pot, and it's, you know, among a lot of plants, so it is kind of a task to turn it. And growing inside, kind of, it's in its own pot, but this is a Monstera siltipicana, so a really lovely Monstera, definitely a little bit different from the other ones that you are maybe more accustomed to seeing. So this one does not get fenestrations until it gets really mature, and I think it's actually more so... Uh, grown for its juvenile foliage, which is rather interesting. Moving down, I have a Syngonium. This is a variegated Syngonium. This is uh, Syngonium Podophyllum Albo Variegatum. Uh, this is a really nice leaf right here. Sorry, the sun's probably not doing it very much justice, but this plant is really, really beautiful. I love all plants, but I'm not like a sucker for variegated plants, but this variegation is absolutely killer. Moving along, I have a philodendron right here. This is philodendron arubicens, or red emerald, or, or I guess it's philodendron arubicens red emerald. Um, this one's growing on a totem and it's outgrown it and you can see some really prolific growth happening up top. And, oh, let's see, what else do I have? Oh, okay, so right here is a philodendron, I don't actually know the name of this plant. I think this is philodendron pedatum, but there are a lot of philodendrons that look like this, and I did not have an actual ID when I purchased this plant, so I don't really know exactly, but we're going to say, for the sake of this video, that this is a philodendron pedatum. And up top, oh, I have a lot of aeroids up here. So this is a really lovely shelf kind of hallway situation that I have going on here. Probably one of my favorite corners in my home, just because I love the way that the vines are all coming down. So... These are all rather common aroids that I have growing up here. So I have a uh, Syndapsis pictus, your standard Syndapsis pictus. So they refer to this one as the Argerius. And then directly next to that, I have the Silvery Ann. So you can kind of see the standard leaves versus the Silvery Ann leaves. And then some Epipernum aureum neon. So as I move down, of course the lighting's not going to do us a very good favor, but you can see this plant gets some lemon lime colored leaves compared to the Epipernum aureum with the, the golden pothos. This one received a lot of light, so you can see some really nice um, yellow variegation on it. But I do have another philodendron arubicens red emerald growing up there as well. And quickly, I'm gonna move down here because I don't wanna skip over these. This is a philodendron, I think this is a super red dwarf or red super dwarf, I can't remember exactly what it is. And then 
This is another type of Raffidophora. This is a Raffidophora decursiva. So this one's a little beat up. I just took a cutting of it, of the nicest leaf. So it's definitely looking a little bit underwhelming. And before we go in my kitchen, actually, we are going to go in my kitchen real quick because I think I literally only have this philodendron heteracium or philodendron scandens right here. Just the standard heart leaf philodendron. Okay, that's a lie. We're gonna move over to my fridge before we go to the bar cart because I have an Aglaonema Silver Bay. So this is your, probably the most standard Aglaonema you're gonna find if you walk into a houseplant store. And I also have a uh, Zamiococcus Zamiofolia Raven. So this is just the black leaf Azizi plant. This one, you know, it's four little plants in the pot. It's a little underwhelming. I can tell I need to shake this one up because it's definitely leaning. And then of course your standard Zamiococcus Zamiofolia ZZ plant, one of the easiest plants, as I mentioned earlier, if you water this more than you pay your rent, it's too much. So cut back on watering it if you're watering more than that. And then I have some Syndapsis pictus just growing around the ceiling of my kitchen. However, I'm kind of thinking about flipping it and having it go that way towards the window because I think that might do better than the way I have it going right now. And I, I cut the tips. I recently moved it there like a month or two ago. So no new growth but i think if we go that way i think we'd have some really good new growth so let's go around i'll give you guys another view of this and let's work our way back to the bar cart so over here i did not feel like cleaning up so please ignore my mess on the floor right here this is a philodendron burl marks this is a rather large one, purchased this in a 10 inch pot, and you can see some really nice new leaves coming in. And then behind it, I have a Monstera adansonii. This is the wide leaf form, so just to quickly pan back to this is the, the narrow form, or sometimes they refer to this as like the Frederick Stollii. Um, and then this over here is the, the wide form. So yeah, I, I, I don't really have any much more to say about that than that, but I, I think I prefer the wide form. I think I really enjoy these large leaves. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. This is a Syndapsis trubii Moonlight. I did an unboxing video on this probably a month or two ago. Really, really beautiful. It's only grown like a leaf or two on each of the vines, and I have cut it back a little bit, I will admit. And uh, another uh, Monstera Peru or Monstera Christianiana. This one is also grown on a totem. These are actually from the same grower which is rather interesting. You know, not a lot of your plants come from the same grower. Syngonium erythrophyllum Yano Carti Road, which has some really gorgeous, like, wine red behinds or undersides. <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm getting a little, you know, I've been, I've been filming this video for nearly 20 minutes now. I'm definitely starting to run out of words. Um, <laughs> this is a Raphidophora decursiva, another one that I have going on in my home. And then a philodendron. This is, I, I don't know what this is actually. This is like philodendron domesticum or philodendron hostatum, but not the blue form, which I'm realizing I skipped over. So allow me to just go back to it right now. So this is the philodendron hostatum, the, the silver sword variety. So here's a really nice leaf, but of course it's getting sunlight all over it. Um, so I don't know if this is another type of philodendron hostatum or if it's philodendron domesticum, so do let me know, I'd love to hear. This is a uh, philodendron tripartitum, so it's known, you know, as the name suggests, it's got three parts, tripartitum, and I have, you know, a little bit more of it growing down here. I really, really enjoy this philodendron. I definitely want to propagate this and make a lot more of it because I am a big fan. And this is philodendron pedatum, some more of it, but I know for a fact that this is philodendron pedatum. Hamalamina selby. So this is a newer one on the market that is really beautiful. It kind of rubs me the way of that like Aglaonema Picta tricolor that people are shelling out hundreds of dollars for, but this was I think like $15 at my work when I was selling them. And any more? Nope. Okay, so up here I have a Syndapsis Pictus Exotica. So this is the third type of Syndapsis Pictus I'd share with you guys today. So this is the largely form. I showed you guys the silvery Anne, which was the silvery casted form, and then the plain, which is the Argerius. And then I just have another ZZ plant up here. So this is a Zamiacolcus uh, Zamiafolia. It's a micro, so this is the, the, the mini version of your standard ZZ plant. And oh my gosh, I think we finally just went through every single aeroid in the living room. So now we're going to move over to the bathroom.
over here in my bathroom, which I definitely need to kind of move things around because they're not looking that great, but I have a philodendron brantianum right here, which they sometimes call it the brandy philodendron. Um, really lovely silver markings to it. This one is, you know, it's not the most vibrant. I have kind of struggled with this particular one, but I have another one you'll see later that's growing a little bit better for me. Down here is a syngonium podophyllum, so just a more standard arrowhead vine. And then I have a uh, syndapsis pictus exotica right here. You can see, I can tell from this leaf curl, I need to water this plant. So always look out for the leaf curl with your syndapsis. I think it's like the best method of knowing when to water this plant. And then I do have one more, hello, um, this Epipernum aureum neon pothos, which you can tell needs a really good drink. And I think honestly, I'm gonna, I don't like this. So I think I'm just gonna get this out of here soon, but I figured I'd rather show you this in my shame now before I, I'm not gonna throw the plant out, I'm gonna revive the plant, but this purple pot and this macrame hanger is just not looking that hot. So we're gonna do something about that. Okay, so now we're gonna move over to my bedroom, which I have a lot of choloroids in. My bedroom is actually a nightmare right now, so I can't believe I'm taking you guys in here with me, but let's just go over to the entrance of the room where I have this funky contraption. This is a this is the Grow Frame by Modern Sprout. I love Modern Sprout. Um, and I have this philodendron gloriosum growing inside of it. Some really, really lovely leaves. I have a new leaf coming in back here, as you can see. And a philodendron white princess, which has a really lovely pink splash to it. Back here is a philodendron melanochrysum and a philodendron moonlight. So some really, really cool plants hiding out in my grow frame. You're gonna hear more about this later this month, but really, really cool product. So right here I have a philodendron ataba poensi, which has a really lovely shade of like maroon on the back, which I absolutely love. And I just had a new leaf come in, which you can see shining ever so brightly underneath my modern sprout grow bar. And then this is a Anthurium Fingers or Anthurium Patata Radiatum. So some rather young, but you can see the, the leaves are getting some of those fingers that it gets. And another Philodendron Gloriosum back there. This one's rather wild. And let's see what else do I have. Oh, this is a Syndapsis Trubii Dark Form. And then behind that I have another a Syngonium Podophyllum Albo Variegatum, but that one's rather white as you can see, so I'm trying to grow that one out to be more green. And what else do we have? Let's just go up real quick because I have a Philodendron Jungle Boogie, which is that sawtooth Philodendron as you see right here. And another Epipernum Pinatum Cebu Blue. This one is one of the ones that I have trailing. I think I actually skipped one of my other ones accidentally, but I have a Epipernum Aurium, this one's the Pearls and Jade Pothos, so this has got some white splotches on the leaves and it has a little bit of green splashing, which means it's a Pearls and Jade. And then a Philodendron Brazil, not the most wild looking Brazil, but you know, I'll take it. And let's go back down, so we're gonna go over here, we're gonna go right here. This is an Anthurium Vicii, they sometimes call this the King Anthurium, and it gets these really lovely rippled leaves. So here's a new leaf that just came in, but hopefully in a few years' time, they'll get the nice elongated leaves that the plant is known for. I think this still looks a little bit more like a standard anthurium. And then moving to the left, let's see what we got. Oh, here we go. Here, I'm just going to turn off my purple lights real quick. I think that'll make it look a little bit better. So this is a philodendron brantianum. I was talking about this in the bathroom, but this one I've had a little bit more better luck with. The leaves are much more vibrant. So this one has just been very, very easy going for me. Really, really beautiful, really full plant. Absolutely love it. And then another Aglianema back there. That's an Aglianema red Siam, if I'm not mistaken, or Siam Aurora, something along those lines. I know it contains the word Siam. I think Siam Aurora is correct. And then a Philodendron radiatum, which has some new leaves coming in for me, although they are rather small. I have been struggling a little bit with the thrips in this plant. I don't think I see any on it right now. I do bring in um, lace wings, beneficial insects in my home, and they usually do a number on the thrips, fortunately, so I think we've been okay thus far. But then this is a Philodendron micans, or Philodendron heteraceum micans. Then moving down, let's see what we got. I don't think we have anything on this level, but on the floor right here, I have this Caladium lindenii, which, of course, I have this crispy leaf, but 
the, the leaves are really stunning. They're, they have some really, really nice foliage to them. And then moving over to the right, I have a Monstera adansonii, the, the narrow form. This needs a drink. You can probably see if I move back how droopy it is. So this really, really needs a drink. And a Diefenbachia reflector. So this gets a really nice white glowing almost strike down the center. It's like almost luminescent. It's crazy. Moving up in the window, I have a regular Monstera deliciosa. We're going to get a lot of sunlight in here, but you can see it taking over the window quite wonderfully. It's actually really, really nice. I really love how full this plant grows. It really will take over a space. I just talked about it in my, my floor plants video. And then if we move up, I think I have two more to share with you guys. This is another Monstera Siltipicana right here. So like I said, not the most um, crazy plant, but it's young foliage. It does get some really nice gray color to it. You can kind of see right there. And then one last one. I have a philodendron lemon lime, once again, growing up and down. So I think my goal is once this gets a little bit longer, I could probably get that vine to grow around the top there. But I would really like it to look just like that syndapsis uh, silvery and that I had earlier in the video. So I'm sure I missed a few here and there, but I'm pretty sure we just covered all of my aroids. Thank you all so much for watching my video today. Definitely let me know if there's any aroids I should be keeping an eye out for. I know I'm stuffed to the gills with plants, but I'm always looking for fun new plants. So if you think there's one I have to have, do let me know in the comments. But anyway, thanks again for watching. If you don't already, follow me on Instagram at Philly Foliage. Subscribe to my channel, and I will see you guys in my next video. Have a great day.